I'm Cassandra Vega with CAD1, and I would like to introduce to you Brian Haley, our technical specialist in the civil area, and he's going to be presenting vehicle tracking for you today. All right, great. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about vehicle tracking. Um, this is, uh, we're going to do it fairly quickly. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here. This is going to be kind of an overview of the capabilities of Autodesk vehicle tracking. Um, watch for future webinars. We will get into more detail details on uh, each topic in future episodes, right? So real quick, uh, my name is Brian. Um, I'm a, a technical specialist here. Um, I do, like Cassandra said, all things civil here at CAD1. Um, but real quick, the agenda that we're going to go through today, uh, real quick, we're going to talk about what vehicle tracking is. We're going to talk about the sweat path analysis the parking lot layouts, and the roundabout design. So what is vehicle tracking? Well, uh, according to the Autodesk website, it's a comprehensive transportation analysis and design software, right? But well, what does that really do for us? Well, it, it has three different areas. It, it does sweat path analysis. So how can a vehicle make it through uh, a road, an intersection, a roundabout, those types of things? It also does the parking lot layout tool. So I, I want to lay out my parking lot. How many stalls do I have? How many accessible stalls do I have? Do, are they angled stalls? Uh, those types of things. And it also does roundabout design. Uh, it, it can do conceptual roundabouts and it can take it all the way up into a, a full corridor model for you. So I'm just going to jump right into the software here. Like I said, we're going to do this fairly quickly. So here I've got a, a layout for a project. And in it, we have this roundabout here. And I want to make sure that my vehicles can make it through the roundabout. So I'm going to start the tools. I'm, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to drive a vehicle through my roundabout. So I, I pick a starting point for my vehicle. I pick a starting angle for it. And uh, I've got a, a truck here. And, but that's not the truck I want. Well, it, vehicle tracking has a whole library full of all sorts of different types of vehicles. All right, so here's, uh, you know, if I come down here to the U.S. design vehicles, you'll see statewide we've got Ashto 2011. And here are all the Ashto vehicles right here available for me. So what type of vehicle do you want to run through it? Or maybe you're not working in the U.S. Maybe you're working in India, all right, so, or Israel. So here are the Israeli design vehicles, all right? So there's all sorts of different types of vehicles. Uh, if you're doing a... a uh, an airport, right? We have airplanes as well. All right, I don't think I'll run an airplane through this little section here, although it'd be kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to do a WB40. Nice, typical semi truck. I'll go ahead and receive that, and you'll see my graphics here will change. So it, it's now a tractor trailer rather than just a single unit truck. Right, I'll go ahead and proceed here, and it's really a simple task of just picking points on the screen. So as you can see, as I move my mouse around, uh, the truck is going to follow where I, I click. So I'm going to click up here. Uh, I'll click up here. And I'm coming into the roundabout here. And I want to, again, I want to make sure that I can make it through the roundabout without, you know, with, by staying on the asphalt. So, you know, I, I'm not a truck driver. So bear that in mind as I, as I go through here. And I'll come in here and we'll come through and we'll, oops. So you can see I, uh, I, I, I went a little too far out there. Well, I, I can always back this up. I just hold down my control key, and, and I can click, and I can place new outlines, and it looks like I was able to make it around that time. And then I can come over here, and we're going to come over into the left lane over here, and then continue on, and I have my vehicle in here. Once the vehicle's in, I can then animate it, so I can animate my design, and I can actually watch the truck. That was weird. Let's try that. Mm, the animation is not liking the GoToMeeting interface. All right. Ah, fatal error. Fatal. Fatal. Right. I think everyone can imagine demo. it. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a live demo if I didn't have a fatal error at least once, right? <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's try this again. we got another file that has a, a, some paths already in it. I'll go ahead and open that up, and we can see the, the animation on it. And 
This is a, just gives you a little proof that, yes, I am doing this live. Who knows why it crashed? We have no idea why sometimes. Let's blame it the happens. go-to meeting. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll blame the go-to meeting interface, right? When in doubt, blame somebody else's software. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and reopen these files. So we'll do the... We'll go with this one here. I'm going to change my visual style. I'm going to change it back here in just a bit. Right. So as you can see, I've got uh, a couple of paths here. I've got a path here. This truck is going to come around and then back in. I've got another truck that just comes straight through. And we can go ahead and animate this. And, and watch them proceed through. All right, so we get a, an animation panel here. And I can go ahead and play this and speed it up a little bit because it gets boring if I don't. And you can see the vehicles come through, and uh, and they go pass right through each other. All right, the one will stop and then back up. And then one of the nice things about this is we can actually view this in 3D as well. So if you if your model is in 3D, we have full controls over how we want to see this in 3D. So let me go ahead and set that to loop, and, and I can follow different vehicles and. Um, it, it's much smoother on my screen than it is through the GoTo webinar, webinar interface. Ooh, we got that collision again. Well, if you need to correct co collisions, we can come in here, and, and I can take this vehicle. Let's see where we want to put this pause in here. I want to pause it just before it makes that turn. So I don't know, about there. I, I can go ahead and edit that and just double-click there, and I will add a new delay of, I don't know, so we'll say five seconds. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Uh, ooh, that's, clo that's close enough for this presentation, right? So now I can come back here, and we'll go ahead and start over. And I'll just go ahead and play that animation now. All right, you can see the cut truck comes in, pauses, the other one comes around, and now, and then it'll back up, and we'll speed that up just a little bit. And we'll back in and park. And then the animation starts over. All right, so, so that's the SWEP path, path analysis tools. Um, I can also do parking lot layout. So let me open up my wrong location. So I've got an aerial image here of an existing parking lot. And I'm just going to use this to kind of demonstrate how the tools work. I had all these drawings open earlier. It was going much faster. All right, and, and so I, I want to lay in a, a new parking row here. So I'll come up to my parking uh, tools, and I'll create a new row. I've got uh, different standards. We'll go ahead and just select OK there. i got some options. If I have surfaces, I could actually drape this over a surface. And I'll just go ahead and sketch in where I want my row to be. I want it to go from there to, say, there. And it's just a single row. I, I could make it just one side or the other side. In this case, I decided to go both sides. Um, but if you notice, this final end island here is at an angle. So I can take these grips, and I can rotate it, and I can make that end island go at an angle as well. Right. Um, right now, I've got a direction. It's going two-way. Two I can change that, and I can make it go one direction. And I'm just grabbing the grip and then moving my mouse, or I can have it go the other direction. So I want that one to go that direction. I want this one to go that direction that way. And now I need to put in another row of parking. So I can put in a parallel row. And this will put another row just to the other side of it. So as you can see, it, it goes parallel. And I can place this new one right there. And I'll do that one more time for the next row. And I want this one to go right there. So very quickly, I can get multiple rows in. Now, this parking lot is kind of weird because these end islands, they're, they're not coincident, right? I'm sorry, collinear. So I, I might have to take this up, and uh, I, I can adjust the end of this and place it wherever I need it to go. I can also change the individual styles themselves. So in this case, 
uh, I need to put in some accessible stalls here. So I'll come in here and I will edit a cell or a parking bay. Is that the right button? Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. So I'll pick the row and, and then I'll pick the bay. So I want to edit this bay here and I want this bay to be an accessible bay. So I can change the bay type to accessible and you have full control over how uh, uh, the parameters and everything. All right, I'll go ahead and copy that to several of them. So I, I've got it assigned to that row, that bay. I want it to be that bay, that bay, and that bay as well. All right, so if you don't want to have the shared access, you don't have to. You could do all sorts of different things with these with these parking styles. And then finally, what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to figure out how many cells of each or how many uh, parking bays of each type I have. So I can quickly run a report. Oh, wrong button run a report and it shows me in this example I have 113 uh, standard parking bays and four accessible parking bays and it shows me a percentage overall last thing I'm going to show off is the roundabout tools So in this drawing, I've got a couple of alignments. The alignments do have profiles already assigned to them. I'm going to use these profiles as I create my roundabout. Um, I also have an existing ground surface here. So I want to go ahead and create a roundabout here. So I'll choose Add Roundabout. Again, I get some options here. So for example, the surfaces. I do have an existing ground surface, so I'm going to assign that. Uh, by doing this, it will allow me to create the corridor. Select OK there. Um, I can give the roundabout a name. I get some different options here. You know, here's the inscribed circle diameter, the center island diameter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also can have different standards. So I can come in here and I can choose the type of roundabout I want to create. So I'm going to do a rule double lane roundabout. So I simply choose that standard. I'll select OK. I'll pick the point where I want the center of the roundabout to be. If you notice, it does not have to be where the two alignments intersect each other. I, I need this one to be offset just a little bit here. So I'm going to place it, I don't know, about there. And then I select the roads that are coming into it. So I'll select this alignment here. All right, I get some options here, lane widths and the name and things like that. I'll select OK. And you can see it places all this geometry in here for me. Now. There's a minimum length that the, the approach for this roundabout needs to have. If I want to go out further than that, when I pick out further away from the roundabout, so I, I picked way out there this time, you can see that goes all the way out there. If I pick in really short, it will go out the minimum distance it needs to. So I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this off with all four lanes here, or rather all four approaches. Right. Hit enter to say that I'm done. Uh, I've got this one set up right now so that it'll automatically create a corridor. You can set it up so that it doesn't create a corridor when you first create the roundabout. So, you know, because, you know, corridors do take a bit of time. Uh, you can have it set up so that it'll create, you can just do the horizontal layout of it. And then once you're happy with the horizontal layout, then you have it create the corridor. Let me go ahead and send this uh, surface to the back here so we can actually see the corridor. I'll grab my corridor here, go to my object viewer. And there is the corridor created from the roundabout. And one of the nice things that we can do with the roundabout, and let me go ahead and change some display here real quick. Go ahead and freeze off this corridor as well as the surface. So I, I can simply see the corridor, or sorry, the roundabout again. If you use the roundabout tools, when you want to drive a truck through the roundabout, you'll notice, I don't know how well you can see this in the go-to meeting, but this truck actually snaps to the roundabout in, in the direction that it's going. All right, so I want to start on this leg here. I, I'll click there. I, again, I can choose a different type of vehicle, but you'll notice that it snaps to the different parts here. And I want it to go exit out there. And, and again, once I've done that, I can then come in and animate the truck driving through here. 
Go ahead and speed that up a bit. And we can now watch the truck drive through the roundabout. And there it goes.